Okay, we are going to start. Where am I on? All right, so first of all, welcome everybody who is here live, everybody who's on the replay, welcome to you too. Um, just remember that this work is accumulative. So if you're just joining in now, it might not make so much sense to you. So go ahead and all the replays are on the Facebook group and we'll also be sending them via email um, because the videos will only be up for about two weeks on the group. And today's class is about fear versus trust. So I want us to just make an intention here. Where are we holding fear in our lives? And how would that pivot in the area that we're holding fear? How would that pivot if we transformed it into trust? What would life look like or how would life feel different to you if there is trust there now instead of fear? And also just taking a moment to pray for the children who have been trafficked the ones who are currently in trafficking, the ones who left that world. And then just also sending them the same healing because it could be that they're, the way that they perceive life is through a very scary worldview. And then just also bringing in whatever healing we do here today also gets transformed for them as well. So let us begin. My notes. Okay, so when we are in fear mode, we basically, we are in shutdown mode. We can't move forward. Fear is the division between us and life. Literally your nervous system will shut down when you're feeling fear and therefore you cannot connect anymore around life. So fear is the dividing point between you and any other expression of life. You can have anger and expression in life. You can have joy and expression in life. You can have curiosity um, or nervousness even, but the second there's fear there, fear shuts it all down. So where you're holding fear, whichever area you wanna look at and the ways that you're holding fear there, you're not, even, you're not even in reality. You're not actually seeing all the different points in which you can connect to life there because the fear is there. Fear is also, there's a healthy version of fear. When your house is on fire, I hope you feel fear, okay? If a lion is attacking you, I hope you feel fear. It's good. It shuts down the system. It gets you into um, a mode of fight, flight, or freeze, or fawn. It, it gets you out of the situation, but in terms of applying for college, stepping forward, being a journalist, all of these things that we need a healthy dose of self-confidence for, or standing in our power, fear shuts us off from that. Okay, does anyone have any questions or comments so far? Hi, Shadi. Okay, awesome. And again, if you're online here, feel free at any point to unmute yourself if you have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. Like yeah. if we felt fear for so long that it becomes like our default, how do you know? Yeah. yeah, that's such a good question. I would say just if you want to close your eyes for a moment, is there any other natural state that you can tap into? Any other memory in which the first response wasn't fear, but was curiosity you were noticing? Um. Yeah, probably like earlier in my career. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific memory that comes to mind? Mm. <clears throat> like when I was a journalist and I would get my articles published and felt proud. Mm -hmm. Get connected to that energy of pride there. That's your, that's your safe space. Mm -hmm because I'm sure your fear also makes you feel a lot of shame. So your pride is actually, you know that Harry Potter that, I um, forget what it's called, that thing that they send to the, um, when the Dementors turn shape, or do you know what I'm talking about? It's that, it's that energy that they have from their wand. It's just kind of like, it's a, your safe space. Patronus. Thank you, Patronus. That's your Patronus, the energy of pride. And it won't be everybody's Patronus. Other people might have different emotions that they'll connect to. 
Um, and then from there, what I would say is go into sensory. Sensory always shifts you out of emotionality back into sensory. Um, so that's what's the farthest thing you can see? What's the closest thing you can see? What's the farthest thing you can hear? Closest thing you can hear? And you can go through all your senses mm. with that. If we had more time, we would go into it now. But that sen sensations bring you into the present and pride kind of unlocks you from that fear. So just, the, I would say those are your two pivot points. Yeah, thank you, It's a great question. Um, another really important point is fear is the shadow from the past pretending to be the future. Okay, I'll say that again. Fear is just unintegrated past projecting itself into the future and telling you that that's what's going to happen. So it's kind of like in those shadow puppets where there's a light here and then you put your bunny fingers up and you can see it and it's huge against the wall. That's what fear is. It's just a projected thing, glitch that happened in the past. Um, and because it projects the unintegrated past, we're more vulnerable to it. Okay, so just from day one where we said you're then, like what if, what if blank without blank, then what? Or your fear is already, it's already there a little bit in your life. Because we said, you know, what if you can have, you're afraid to win the lottery because then your family will be reliant on you. And then I ask you just, is your family already a little bit reliant on you? And the answer is always yes. So that's the unintegrated past that's still holding you back. And it's too afraid, it's too scared to come into the future or it's projecting into the future to tell you not to move forward. So it already exists in your presence a little bit and therefore it's not letting you move forward, but also just reminding you you're managing with it in your present already and you're fine. Okay, you're already a little bit living in that reality of fear. Okay, any questions as well? Okay, great. Okay, so fear is the integrated part protecting you um, instead of guiding growth. And integration guides growth. Integration is wisdom. Fear blocks it. Okay, so think of an army general who got promoted um, too early or by accident. It might not be yours, your fear. It might not be, it might be your parents, it might be history. Trauma comes down generationally, it comes down culturally. And sometimes it's really hard to see it as a system, like as a systemic issue, because it's so much in your day-to-day -day life that you think that's just the way it is. Like you just think money's a struggle to get. You just think boys will be boys. You just think, you know, you have to be skinny in order to be beautiful. All these things that we think are such truths. They're mostly cultural or they're generational or they're historical. I had um, a moment, I remember like five years ago where I was just driving on the bus and I was looking out the window and I had this like thought of like, you know, it's really sad because I'm creative. So I guess I'm going to have to marry for money. And like that thought came up and then the next thought was like, which Victorian grandparent, like great, great ancestor had that thought in my mind. And I was just like, I could also just make money and then I can marry for love. Like, I don't know how this story came up that I had to like either have creativity or have love. I couldn't have both. And then it, it was something that just had to get integrated of I can have both. It's called like being a spiritual coach, right? Like teach stuff I make up. It's awesome, you know? And I can still make money from it and I can marry for love now. It's great. 2022, it's an awesome, awesome time to be alive. So just noticing that, that like, your fears, a lot of them aren't even yours. And those are actually the easiest to get rid of because you don't have to actually do the work to move through it. Okay, how can you tell if you're living your life in the fear lane? You're second guessing everything you're doing. You're saying no because you have to. You know, like those times where it's just, you have to say no. You don't even know why. It's just that I have to keep control. You forget what it feels like to let go of expectations. You need to know all the steps of what's going to happen along the way. Lack of flexibility, because again, flexibility is a sign of safety. Also, if you're thinking and always, never, all the time, that's a sign that your reptilian brain is activated because your reptilian brain can't hear or feel or remember nuance. So whenever like, I don't know if you're ever like calling someone out in your head and you're mad at them and they'll have a thought like, you never call me back, even though you get mad at me when I don't call you back. 
that word never there, like you're, you're in trauma mode, you're in reptilian brain, you're in survival mode, okay? Never, all the time, always. Those are like the way, if you're thinking in those terms, you know you're in your fear mind. Um, also, depending on your tendencies, it's either going to make you try super hard and become a perfectionist, or it's going to get you to stop trying at all, which makes you become per, like a procrastinator. Um, and those are just two sides of the same coin. Um, and you'll always try to think of reasons or have reasons why you shouldn't keep trying or why you should keep staying small. Okay, does anyone have any questions, thoughts? And just let the, all that information come through because there's a lot there. Okay, and let's just do um, a little round robin if you're able to. If fear wasn't a factor in your life, what would be something that you would do? If you didn't feel fear. I would stop procrastinating. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you would do without that procrastination? Because that's like your procrastination. What's the thing beyond procrastination? Um, I guess taking the responsibility. Like I let fear stop me from making decisions. Mm -hmm. Whether that be um, about my career, about taking care of my health, etc. Yeah. And uh, because of the fear, I procrastinate. And then I put myself into a stressful situation. Yeah. Which, by the way, just elicits the fear response. Yep. Yeah. So it's a cycle. Yeah. Thank you. Who else? What else would you guys do? Fear wasn't a factor. Um, I would take more risks like with um, career, money, relationships. Oh, you're on mute, David. I guess because, yeah, for me too, it would be like uh, making videos every day and uh, like doing a lot of uh, things that I don't allow myself to do. Yeah, self-expression. Yeah, awesome. Anyone else want to go? I would make all, yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. You'd immigrate to Israel, awesome. Okay, this is a really, really important point. I wanna like between our comfort zone and outside of our comfort zone, which I'll go into what that is, is fear. That line there is fear. Almost like a, a woman's vagina after giving birth, it stretches. So the more we give birth, the more we do things, the more we produce, the more we create in our life and go, like our, our comfort zone stretches. It's an amazing thing. The more we birth, the more understanding we have of, ah, this is a process. It's fucking scary before we start, but then we do it. And it's not when we're doing it and then it's amazing and we learned it was fine. It was, a lot of moments are really shitty, but you learn that you can handle it. You can handle those moments. Um, your soul comfort zone is growth, learning, truth, experience, knowing, knowledge, wisdom. Those are, that's your soul's comfort zone. That's, that's what makes your soul feel really comfortable and safe when it's in that space. But your comfort zone, your ego's comfort zone is safety, stability, predictability, and security. And you can hear how that clashes a lot between your soul's comfort zone and your comfort zone. The line between those two is fear. So anywhere your fear is on the other side of that, treasures await you. Um, so you're integrating more and more bandwidth and more and more talents and skills and abilities within your safety cycle as your 
expanding your comfort zone, okay? And it will keep kind of drawing in and out, like the tide. It, it's gonna like, you'll expand your comfort zone and then you're gonna have the next level of your soul's comfort zone that it wants to draw in. And then that will become your comfort zone until the next layer comes out. Um, I remember like I had, there was this boy that I was in love with for like three years and I was doing all these hints that I liked him and I never really said it out loud. And then I finally, like I was, I, I felt like I was an animal that you had to take me out of like misery. Like I had to let him know. And I did that thing where I just stepped out of my comfort zone and I texted him and we met in a park on a bench. Like I'll always remember this. We met at a park at a bench and I was like, do you know why you brought, why I brought you here? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. And it wasn't like, and then I was rewarded and then we got married. He like did not like me back. But I remember walking away from that bench and like literally going like this to my body because I realized that rejection can't kill me. It was like such a, I remember like that was literally the, the response thought after I walked away from the bench was I'm still alive. And I didn't know that for three years, I was thinking that I would die if I got rejected. And that was such a huge moment for me of like, you can get rejected and you'll be fine. You know, you might need a lemon poppy seed muffin, but you might need that, you know? I think I like cried in my roommate's room that day, but like, you're fine. We can handle these things that scare us so much, okay? So I want everybody to write down in their notes, I'm comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because when you're uncomfortable, that is, that's the pushing. That's the sign, like there's something here. And I'm not talking about the uncomfortable where somebody um, offers you something and something feels off. It's not, that's discomfort. And discomfort is different than uncomfortable. Uncomfortable means I know I have to step into something in myself that feels scarier, deeper, wider, whereas discomfort feels like there's something off about this. I don't have the full picture. And, and you can tell, I, it's like waking up before camp starts versus like that creepy guy messaging you on Instagram. There's a difference. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, awesome. Okay, so you're comfortable with being uncomfortable and let's make fear into a safer feeling because then you know that growth expansion is happening and then you're connecting to your divine. Okay, so connection to your fear is to know the barrier of the unintegrated past with the expanded self. The unintegrated past is the fear trying to stop you from moving forward, for being projected into the future and saying this will happen. And then there's this other tug of war of your soul saying, this is where you're meant to be going. Because you, and without integrating that, you won't be able to level up, okay? A person with integrity is aligned with themselves, their divine mission and is, is integrating all parts of themselves and they've integrated the past, present, future. And in order to do this, you have to normalize. You have to keep normalizing these fears, these things that we wanna level up. Like literally vision yourself sitting in your mansion and being annoyed because it's garbage day. It's garbage day and you have 40 rooms with garbages. <laughs> Like normalize it, just normalize it. You're already helping your family out. It's okay if you get a lot of money. It's okay if that means that you're gonna have to hire someone with your hedge fund. That's okay, it'll be okay. It's really annoying to wait for someone's email to respond to you and it's time sensitive. You're already doing that now in your smaller scale. Okay, so what I wanna do here is um, really bringing in the way that we get used to this un, like this discomfort feeling or this uncomfortable feeling between safety and our soul's comfort zones and our comfort zones is write a list of things that you were afraid to do and then you did anyways maybe conversations you've had and i'm not looking for and then it was amazing it can be anything i was afraid to tell that boy that i loved him and he told me no it was fine. And then I was afraid to get the PCP and it was amazing. So like, it, it can be both things that you really were, had a wonderful experience and things that you had a hard experience with.
Wait, you asked like something we've done that that was scary and yeah. yeah. And it's like you switch schools in sixth grade at the end of summer after fifth grade. That was really scary, but you did it. Mm, for me, it was um, overcoming my fear of driving. Beautiful. Write that down. What I'm trying to like flesh out of you guys is that you already have a relationship with fear. It's actually not as debilitating as you think it is because you've met fear multiple times in your life. Even if you've let fear take the driver's seat, six out of 10 of those times, four out of 10, you did it and you did it anyways. And all it did was expand you. I'm not saying all it did was reward you because that's not true, but it did expand you. Fear is the sound that your ego makes before it gets stretched. Yeah, I was afraid to stand up for myself in a situation where I faced false allegations. I did it regardless of the outcome. Beautiful, Daisy. It's not simple. And on the other side, when you're generating that list, I want you to write a list now of the things that you're holding fear around now. It can be big things, little things. When you look at your first list of the things that you're afraid of and then you did anyways, right next to it, I want you to write what was fleshed out of you or what was expanded from you. What was the attribute that either got mastered from that or began developing from that? And then with your new list, your future list that you're afraid of, just that question that we asked on day three of if I didn't, if I won't have this the rest of my life, or if I'm in this situation the rest of my life, what would I need to develop in order to accept this? So if it's, I'm afraid I'm never going to find my life partner, I would need to develop freedom or self-acceptance. And that's what life is trying to develop from you in order to get it. Go ahead, David. 
Yeah, sorry, I didn't uh, really understood the, the the question. No, you you can repeat. Mm -hmm. So, on the first page, you're doing the past fears and that you went through anyways, and what what came from that, what was evolved from you from that, and then the second page is the fears that you have from the future, the things that you're afraid of. If you're in this situation the rest of your life, what would you need to develop in yourself in order to accept this situation? So. And, and, and that's so, how you when, see. when you say the situation, you mean the situation that you would like to, to go through, but you're scared yet, yeah? Like, so let's say you're afraid of um, being financially like broke or bankrupt, you know? Um, so if let's say that was something that you're going to have, what would you need to develop in yourself in order to be okay with the situation? Patience, trust, yeah. And then this is kind of how you get into like the backwiring of life because now you actually see, oh wait, there was an intention that you were here. Look how intentional your life is. Look how much, look how much is being developed here. Look how much of a plan there was. Okay, so let's do a quick like 10 minute constellation and this will be also your homework. Have you ever, anybody ever heard of a vision board before? Awesome. Okay, so vision boards for anyone who hasn't heard, vision boards are putting like on in front of you, a, like it's really fun arts and craft project as well of just putting on the different images of things that you desire. So this way it's coming into your periphery every single day, you're seeing it. Um, my vision board for 2020 is so funny because then 2020 happened, but it was in my like desktop and now looking at it like every single thing came true. It's holding all these different symbols that also sh like show evident, like show what you want um, in different ways. So what I do is called, it's a vision board plus an evidence board. So using evidence of things that already happened in your life that brought you joy, that were things that you manifested, things that you brought in. And this way, having those mixed together actually settles your nervous system. So instead of feeling fear when you're trying to up level, it's like, oh, I already did that because I already, I already brought in other good things. So they're, they become the same energetically. So it's much more easy to um, bring it in. I'm gonna see if I can show you guys mine. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm so many tabs open. Okay. So. Okay. Can you guys see my background of my computer? Awesome. Okay, so Right over here, I want to buy a school bus and convert it into a schoolie, like a place to live in. Um, I wanted to start doing a lot of Zoom calls and bringing in groups in, and what month is it? It's May now. So I did that this year already, but this wasn't in my reality in January when I made this. Um, I wanted to have beautiful connections, so I put in here a picture from the hike of my hiking friends. Um, and then there's here, which is like a picture from a workshop that I did. So. It's just a mix of things that I haven't brought into my reality yet and things that I already have. So this way it already, it just, it feels so doable. All right, so who would like to do, let's do like a live, um, a live demonstration of that. Um, we're gonna do some constellation work. Who would like to be the client? Biana, would you like to go? Are you able to? I don't know if she's with us. Anyone else would like to volunteer?
Razel, you want to volunteer? Great. Awesome. Okay, so Razel. Great. So what you're going to do, Razel, is you're going to choose two people. And also anyone who gets chosen, you're welcome to say no. You're going to ask one person to take on the role of your desires. And one person to take on the role of um, your fears. Okay, I'm just going through who's here. Mm -hmm. um, Shadi Farahi, hey, um, would you like, uh, could you please take on the role of my desires? Yes. Okay. And Sarah or Sarah, can you please take on the role of my fears? No? Okay. Um, David, can you please take on the role of my fears? Okay. So the two people in the roles, it's so fun when everybody knows family constellations. You can just close your eyes and allow yourself to get into the role. You can also stand up if you need, that will help you. And just allow yourself to go deeper into the role. Take another deep breath in and out. And just notice when sensations are happening in your body and notice it, they move to emotions. And if those emotions then change to thoughts. And then you can go ahead and look around the room. And what I want you to do is I want you to look at one another and just to begin to dialogue. Desires, how are you feeling? Good, a bit nervous, but good. Mm -hmm. Fears, how are you feeling? Excuse me, maybe I didn't hear you were asking me. Yeah, I asked, how are you, how are you feeling, fears? Yeah, excuse me, I didn't get it. Uh, I felt directly like a like a contraction in the belly, and then in the top of the body too, mm -hmm. and with a feeling of a uh, yes fear, but also like annoyance. Mm. What's the annoyance about? I don't know, but like something like a, I don't want this. Huh? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, so fears and desires, you can go ahead and just begin speaking to one another. Do you know why you're annoyed? No, and what what do you want? Um, I want more good things. Um, I feel like you're a bit stuck and hungry. Um, yeah, I feel a bit ignored. But what do you want? Mm. It's not crystal clear, and I'm okay with it not being crystal clear, but I think just more positive experiences with like my people, um, and, like the people I've yet to meet. And I don't know, I just don't wanna feel limited anymore. What do you want? I don't want to put in trouble. Say that again. I don't, 
I say, I don't want trouble. I don't want a mess. I feel I feel stressed and like this. And because of this, not knowing what you want. Mm. Mm. But why do you assume it's a mess? I just want more. Like whatever yeah, we're doing. But it's, it's dangerous if you don't have a... I don't, I don't know what you want. You want to, you need to, it needs to be clear. If not, I can, if not, it's dangerous. Fear, does Razel already have disorganization in her life to some extent or messiness? I want to say, I didn't say mess in this sense. Mm -hmm. Like a mess, yeah, a bit like a balagan, but more like chaotic, dangerous. Yeah. Does she already have a little bit of chaos in her life? Are you asking me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Your fear. Uh, it feels like uh, it's been uh, difficultly left behind. And so there is a need for clarity and, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> security mm -hmm. and no and space, no. Yeah. Fear, I want you to take a moment to remember that in all of those times where she didn't have clarity and there was chaos, she handled it. She had resilience. She got to the other side. So even when there wasn't clarity, she was still, she still moved through it. Mm. I tell you what it feels okay. So it feels like inside, like no, it's actually once she decided what she wants, that she could find some rest, some space. Mm. There is a need for decision. When there is no decision, it's dangerous. Yeah. You notice how we were talking about before that um, safety is a sign, flexibility is a sign of safety. So that's that's the fear talking right now. There needs to, you need to know, you need to know every single step. So desire, if you have any response to that. It just makes me sad. Like my stomach actually hurts. It's um, hard to stay in the same place. And I want us to move forward um, without having a really detailed plan or knowing every step because it's like suffocating to just be standing still or sitting and thinking so much um, and assuming that the future is going to be the same as the past um, because life is so short. So just, yeah, it's everything he said makes my stomach hurt. Mm -hmm. Totally. I want you to also just um, remind him that you can feel it in your body when it's the right next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, I think of it as a gut feeling. Um, but when you're so much in your head and thinking about what could go wrong and the mess and all that, you're ignoring a lot of important clues, especially from your gut. Yeah. Fear is definitely held in the head. Okay. Um, Razel, do you want to say anything to your fear or desires? Sorry, it's screaming in my head. So I just want to say this word. <laughs> Yeah, because it was what was happening when I was hearing the desire talking. It just needs a direction. It needs a direction. This is what it's talking. No blah blah blah. Not every detail. Just a clear direction. For God's sake, like it's like this inside. And that's not a paradox at all to desires. Mm -hmm. I don't know if desire that. Yeah. Desire. No. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Just somewhere, like I just, 
the thought of just sitting still pains me. So even if it's just a vague idea or direction, um, I'm happy with that. I choose one. Yeah. And I want to say that's the that's the cycle because fear stops you from feeling what your desires are, and then you can't even move forward. And then you you're not even going into that direction because you feel so stuck, and you just want to get out. But then fear even holds you tight more tightly because it's like you need a direction. So that's why the voice of our desires needs to become louder than the voice of our fears, which is only happens through practice, only happens by continuously jumping off the diving board. Um, yeah. Rizal, do you have anything that you'd like to ask or say to your desire or fear? I want to thank them for stepping up and expressing themselves so clearly. I found it very supportive. And I'd love to ask desire, if I may, to express more clearly what direction um, feels right. It's a hard question and I don't know I think it's I think it's like giving yourself permission for what you do want because I think you do know that um and fear kind of represses it. And so just by like giving yourself permission to acknowledge the thought somewhere down there, like this is what I want to do. Um, and I just like feel it very viscerally that it's like time to take a step forward because the pain of staying in the same place is worse than anything that could happen by risking moving forward. Um, so I'm not really sure what area of life it is, but it's just like this very visceral feeling of like, it has to be more than whatever's in the present moment. And like, there's a real appetite and hunger. Which is also why it's interesting you use that word twice because you also said fear was hungry. So desire is hungry and fear is hungry for, and you're both hungry for safety, for comfort. One is for the soul's comfort and the other one's for the comfort zone. Yeah. Okay, so let's just, um, Razor will give you a blessing just to give yourself permission. And for all of us to just give ourselves permission to hear those thoughts. Thank you. Yeah. I wish I could, I wish I could hand out adult permission slips. Just go after whatever it is. It's yours. Yeah. The desire is there. It means it's already, it's already planned for you to have it. It's already coming through you. Yeah. Okay. So the two people who are in the roles, you can go ahead, shake your bodies out, leave the roles. Um, and I want to thank everybody for this four day series. I'll just spend like two minutes talking about the program. I would love, 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 love to have everybody here who's live plus everybody here who's watching. Um, it's, I mean, you see what a group container does. We do like six months of therapy in one session. And these things that we're all moving through are so universal. And who we choose, every session we're gonna choose two people to show up to do an, a live demonstration and those two people are the ones that are holding that issue that we're working on the tightest in their energy. And we use an energy modality each week, a different one, but I teach you how to actually move through that, through that issue energetically. And it moves through everyone. Cause again, when somebody has the biggest zit, it just pops it else for everybody else. Um, and we're going again through every issue that every corner there is of life around money, our voice, our sense of self, our relationships, intimacy, business, all of those corners, 
to really revive who you are and to give that permission back to yourself because it's so fucking important. You can't do anything without giving permission to yourself. So really giving every week and also the, the beauty of partner work because when you're not just working in a group container but you're also having a partner every week that you're meeting with, you're just reinforcing that, that you are, you're not stuck and you're moving through and every week that we meet together, you're moving a little bit further. Um, I know we're ending our 10 week program now and me and two other people moved countries. Someone dyed their hair blonde. Like there's just changes that have happened. Um, so I want to just gift us also the, bless us with the embracing of fear and embracing of changes and challenges instead of the fear and staying in our comfort zone. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Just we could do one word, one sentence each, just a takeaway that you got from this series. And then we'll say good night. Whoever would like to go first. Um, I got the feeling that like um, I'm not alone. Yeah, you're not. I got the feeling that it's possible. Yeah. I think my takeaway was uh, fear is the division between us and life. And uh... I feel like a, a renewing, you know, like a, like the nice enthusiasm, the, the feeling of possibility. Beautiful. Um, one last thing I forgot to mention, I will still be hopping on lives in the Facebook group. So you guys can keep posting your homeworks. I'm going to keep popping up. This today's specific homework or the takeaways creating your evidence board which is your evidence board plus your vision board like putting those together creating that making so, that's so I love them they're so fun to make um, and it's a joy to like just watch things come true as you move through and lastly our the carts are open now for the revive course we have the early bird special until May 10th and then the carts close June 1st so if you have any questions want to get on a call with me about it I'm available and I appreciate you guys have such a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank yourselves for taking the time out to do this. Thank Bye you guys. so much, Ricky. Ricky. Bye, loves. <laughs>